Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Premium Bandai Master Grade review and today I'm taking a look at this right here. And of course, once again, this is the Master Grade Jester and what makes this any different? Not a lot, really. Essentially, just this big old gun. Anyway, of course, this is the Master Grade Jester Shizar Type Team BNC. And once again, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Baiyi, nor would any other P Bandai review. So if you're looking for some P Bandai, then check out those links down there in the description. Now, here we go. So straight away, this is what the Jester Shizar Type looks like out of the box and just snapped together. At first glance, it may just look like your standard Jester to you, and honestly, it does to me too. So Right off the bat, let's just start off with the comparison. So first off, there is the standard full release Jester, which you can get anywhere. Turn him around a bit. And there is the premium Bandai Jester Cannon, which funnily enough is in the exact same pose that I've left it in since I took the thumbnail from that review. So before I actually go into all the differences between this kit and the other ones, and there is surprisingly more than you would think, there is a quick spin of what the finished model looks like. And just like the other versions of the Jesta, this thing is debatably the best looking master grade gym type suit out there. And of course, debatably. Gym Sniper 2 is pretty damn good. The master grade Jesta is big, bulky and dark and just looks like something that almost stepped out of Halo. All in all, this thing is badass. But before I actually mention the differences, how many differences can you spot between this and the original just before I get into it? So I'll give you three, two, one, here we go. So the first difference and the one that I actually didn't even notice till I put them all on the table together is... They're a different color. So I will admit it might be hard to tell because my original Jester right here is absolutely caked with dust, but uh, the Shizar type right here is in a richer color than this right here. It's in a rich navy blue as opposed to this kind of muted navy blue. And just in case you're curious, the Jester Cannon is in the exact same colors as this guy right here. The reason for that more than likely is the Jester and the Jester Cannon are from Mobile Suit Gundam UC or Unicorn, whereas the Shazar right here is from Mobile Suit Gundam NT or Narrative. So maybe they've jazzed up the color since then, but this, the Shazar, does look richer and nicer. I would go as far as saying that the Lighter blue sections are exactly the same in both. Of course, you can see the Shizar has gray missiles here instead of white. The little Fetty logo there, I think, is in the same shade of yellow, maybe a little bit lighter on the Shizar. And one obvious color difference is these very light shades of blue here, which go with the darker blue and this mid-range blue that this guy over here doesn't have. But what that means is that there is two different colors of the same Runner C. So when you're building this, that can be a bit of a pain in the arse, because you'll see Runner C, and you'll just use one or the other, well I did, without really thinking. Whereas in the instructions it will say C blue grey, as well as C light blue. So it can be quite easy to muck that up, and a couple of times I did have to pull some parts apart, so be careful with that. But anyway, besides the color differences, the only real difference on these kits, of course, is that sensor type sight thing that's on the head. Otherwise, physically, they're identical. So as we've seen the articulation on these guys so many times, already in the past. The only thing I might as well show you is that. So that can swing down and looks like that right there. So it does have a sticker for the end of it in a metallic pink. Speaking of the stickers that come in the box, this right here is what we get. The biggest, most obvious ones are these light blue ones. These are actually for on these chest sections right here. I didn't want to put them on because these look fine the way they are. They're not color accurate to the show, or should I say movie? But personally, I felt that the stickers would cheapen it a bit. As for those big shiny green ones, those are for on the weapons. The reason only number four is used is because it does not obscure a clear part. It actually goes in behind, which looks nice. The other big one would have went over that nice green part there. Maybe I should have tried putting it in behind just to re-reflect the light out like this one here. That's such a good effect. And that red one there, that's just for this little part here on the side of the capture gun. And it is sad to say that this is one of the poor unfortunate P Bandai kits that does not come with water slides. So this right here is just your standard little set of sticker style Jester decal. So that is a bit of a letdown considering how many P Bandai kits come with water slides. However, we do get that little sheet of Jesta dry transfers. Dry transfers are and always have been my favorite style of Gundam decal. Too bad we don't see them as much as we used to, but these things are definitely awesome and I love them. 
So now moving on into the accessories, and this is what it's all about. And you can tell why, because that thing stands out. So first off, what we've got in here, and we got with the standard Jesta, is the Beam Sabers. We've got two in here because of the Double C Runner. We've got that standard base adapter, two variants of the pilot figure, once again because of the different colors of Sea Runner. We've got the Beam Carbine, which was one of my favorite Fetty weapons until the, uh, AK. <laughs> And of course, what is new for this kit is that huge mega beam launcher on a tripod, as well as the capture gun. Now, let's take a look at everything. So first up in here, we've got the beam saber. This is about as basic as they come. Of course, we do have two of these, one in light blue, so this one is spare. As for moving parts, inside the handle here, we've got that flip out tab, which is usual for those perfect grade style hands. When this isn't in use, just pop out the beam, and it can slot in here into the back of the arm. This is one of my all Time favorite beam saber storage options right here in the side of the arm I think is so cool It just tucks in there like so and when it needs it just pull this back This flips out and that right there is sheer awesome design next up then is the beam carbine this we've seen multiple times before once again it has the flip out tab there in the handle for using with the perfect great hands. This little section here can flip out to the sides like so can drop down like that magazine can be removed and attached, and it's got that awesome clear piece in the sight. But all in all, it's exactly what we saw before. Next up then is the capture gun, and I'm not really gonna mince words here, this thing is pretty shit. First off, they didn't really try too hard with the handle, it's just a standard slot for using with the tab in the palm. It is just all one slab of grey, it is made of a couple of parts, and I mean a couple of parts. This thing also requires three stickers, no clear parts, and honestly what kills me the most about it is just that barrel. It literally just ends inside of there and just looks kind of weird. Definitely not master grade level right here. Also up top there you can see it has a similar sight to the beam carbine right here, but once again it's just block grey plastic. That requires stickers and would have looked so much better with a clear part. But that is enough about all of that. The only reason, the main reason for buying this kit is this right here. So of course this is the Mega Beam Launcher on a tripod and if you're curious as to why you think you recognize the Mega Beam Launcher right here, it's because we've seen this somewhere before. And that, of course, is because these were featured on various versions of the Master Grade Rezzle. An absolutely awesome looking kit. Looking. But either way, there is something that sets them apart a little bit besides the tripod here, and that is, well, this wire here. That isn't the background you see in there. That is actually a flat bit of plastic attaching the wire to the beam cannon, and that looks pretty damn bad. On the Rezzle, that doesn't exist, so I'm not sure why they did that with this. It doesn't look good at all. So all in all, this thing right here is deceptively simple. It looks like there's a whole lot going on, but there isn't really. So as for the moving parts, the handle right here can move down and up like so. As you can see, there is a hole there, once again, for the tab that is in the palm of the hands. This right here, this stock section is shaped to the shoulder. There is some extending sliding motion here, but first, these legs here can pivot back and forward, just like so. These little leg sections can also pivot like that, depending on the surface you have it on. Same goes for the front one here. This can extend down, the back legs can come down too for a higher positioning, like so. And of course the little pivot in those legs works in this sort of way. If you shorten one, those can pivot like that. So you've got it aiming down the way, extend, and there you go, you've got it aiming up the way. So there is a lot of nice movement in this. There's also a pivot at this point, pivots from there all the way to there. And lastly we have this little arm section here which disconnects up from there, out from there. And there is a bit of a slide mechanism inside of there, but that isn't really all that functional. It's not really like you're going to do much with that. So most of the time you're just going to have that locked in, then around here, locked in like so, and do all the pivoting down here. But anyway, like I mentioned, this really is the star of the show of this box, so more than likely you're going to be posing your Shazar type Jesta with this huge cannon right here. So that's what it will look like up on your shelf with that cannon. And all in all, this is one hell of a weapon. It looks awesome. But anyway, that right there is it for the review. Just like every version of the Jesta, this right here is gold tier. This is just a variant with some extra weapons, and the weapons themselves are quite plain. I do love the Mega Beam Launcher, that is what this is all about. Once again, this is just the Mega Beam Launcher we saw at the Rezzle before, but with kind of weirder pipes. The tripod's cool, it looks great, 
And the new colors on the Jesta I think are bolder and better than what we saw before. So all in all, is there much of a reason to go for this over the standard Jesta? And honestly, I would say there isn't really, unless you really want the one from Gundam NT and really want that mega beam launcher. If that's the case, then definitely, definitely go for it. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, it helps out the channel. If you want one of these, there is links in the description. I got mine through Amazon Japan, through Bai. That's where you can get yours. And as always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. I'll see you next time.